Okay, we're back on the show. We're getting all settled here. Glenn Jones joins us. I'm going to move back a little bit so you can move up, Glenn, so we can sure. see you there. Otherwise, I look like a giant here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, back on the program. This is Glenn Jones. Uh, Glenn, a former player at uh, Daytona and Melbourne, uh, has gone on now to become the lobbyist and uh, vice, vice president, president of mm -hmm. the uh, International Highlight Players Association. Glenn, very much involved in what's happening with the sport and uh, the future of the sport, really, as well. Um, You've had some victories in the legislature the last couple of years. Before you came on, we talked about uh, House Bill uh, 3663 mm -hmm. that changed the taxation of the sport of highlight and really all pure mutuals. It really took it out of the dark ages and made it uh, easier for to operate a business properly. I mean, there was a while there where the taxes were almost more than the profits. Absolutely, and but it was no, it, keep your mic up it was that. basically a, you know the argument was uh, to to bring the the tax code into into the the, the era now where we're competing, you know, back when Highlight and Paramutuals in general were first uh, legalized, that it was the only way to bet legally in the state of Florida. And then starting in the late 80s when the Florida lottery started up, and then you had the Indian casinos come, and then the cruise ships to nowhere. And so we were in a whole different, uh, in, in a whole different market of how we could compete with these other industries. And uh, so we, it took us a, a long time, but it was a hard fought and, uh, and a very successful uh, campaign. And, uh, and it helped keep, um, you know, Dania probably would be closed today if it wasn't for the passage of that bill. So Yeah, they had it, actually uh, slated themselves to close if the bill did not pass. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, they're doing pretty well, probably as well as any of the other frontons right now. Yeah, I would say, you know, this is the best market that we have in South Florida with Dania and Miami. And, uh, and so hopefully with, um, you know, now that we got that bill passed, now we can, uh, you know, we can now work on, on some additional legislative stuff that we're going to be able to that we need in order to be able to take the sport you know into you know into the into this new millennium and hopefully we'll be able to get some support from the new legislators we're going to have a tremendous legislative change this year with the term limits kicking in there's going to be over 70 new legislators and that's just unheard of normally we maybe deal with um, maybe five six ten new ones and and hardly ever do they change on the on the committees where we have to deal with it's going to be very difficult for us now to go into lobby legislators who when you say uh, I, I need to talk to you about highlight they look at you and think you're talking about a Chinese checkers game or so something. really it's not necessarily a good thing uh, you have to uh, re-educate these legislators that's part of a big job absolutely it, you know I'm amazed even when I first started I've been lobbying now for 12 years and even then when I started when you had the same legislators for 20 years uh, in in the same office I it's amazing to me when I first went in how how few people unless they were from an area that had a highlight front on just did not know and understand the the sport of highlight and so it was an education at that point just to get them on board and we worked hard and it took us five or six years before we were able to start getting the things we needed to get and in the mid 90s we started getting that and now they're all gone and we're gonna have to start it all over again okay we talked about the players rallying at that time and everybody got behind it uh, it had to be a good feeling to get some things accomplished uh, that year and that was an important year for the sport of highlight it was a tremendously important year and if it you know as I said if it if that if that was unsuccessful um, we would have been in a in a very in a very bad uh, position uh, as it is right now, we, we've got, you know, we've lost uh, a lot of, uh, you know, we had 14 frontons. You're on the air, sir. You're on the air. We had 14 <laughs> frontons the in, the state, in, the, in the United States when I started playing in the late 80s and then and 10 in Florida. Now we're down to five, but at least I feel now that the five we have are, are solidified and then we can try to work and do things that we need to bring it back and maybe even increase and get some places built back up again. But I think it was important for the players, too, and Benny can talk to this because you know, we had been in existence, the union had been in existence since 1988, and I had been lobbying since 1989. And many people knew me that I was the vice president and I was lobbying, but they didn't understand what it was that I was trying to do up there. Right. And we had had some, you know, some very big successes in, early eight, in the early 90s. We got what's called breaks money for the players, and we got a charity day that gives players that are retiring some money. But they didn't know what it was like. From them coming up, we bust all the players from Miami, Dania, Tampa, Orlando, Fort Pierce, they all bust up there and, and, and got to see what it was we did. The, the players were all introduced, if you remember Benny, in the, in the house gallery. They, the players came in and we were introduced from the house floor by several of the South Florida legislative delegation. And, and I think it was a good education for them too to see what it was that we were all about and then for it to be successful. And I can tell you from many state legislators, they, they said that was a real turning point for that bill when, when they saw the players and the families and they were able to put a face to the issue it really helped push that bill because that bill was stalled for several weeks and then that day it really helped us kick the bill into gear and then we got it passed um, by a tremendous success 113 to 1 in the house and 34
four to three in the Senate, which is uh, unusual for a prayer mutual bill. Okay, so uh, let's go on to this year then, where really things weren't as successful. Uh, in talking with Benny Collette, uh, the owner of, uh, of uh, Florida Gaming here, he mentioned to me that since that was kind of high -lies year mm -hmm. last year, that this year was more a bill for the dog tracks and some of those. And you work together on some things. Uh, as politics goes, you would have to give and take sometimes. And this year, it was important to try to get some card room games additionally. Uh, there was the, uh, the video lottery terminals that it would hope to get at one point that really didn't go through. And those are the things that you're striving to help the industry somewhat so that the high lie sport on the court can survive. Absolutely. You know, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, I, I always, uh, we get into this discussion all the time in the players' meetings as to, you know, how much we should help to bring in these extra products. But, you know, if I could take... Uh, you know, a magic wand and, and put us back into the 80s when there was no Florida lottery and there were no cruise ships to nowhere and there were new, no Indian casinos. And, and, and this would be the only way for, for the people to come into bed. I would love it, but that's not the reality today. So the reality is that we have to deal with the market that, that's out there. And so we have to try to help offset the, uh, the public's uh, appetite for, for these additional betting opportunities. So. We fought, uh, you know, I think we gave last year, or the year before last, we gave up the whole year on the video lottery terminals. It was just a pie in the sky. We, we all had our eyes, you know, the size of silver dollars hoping of something. And it just, I don't think it was very realistic at that time. We're just not there yet. Last year, we had a more realistic uh, approach to try to get some, uh, some fixes for the card rooms. And, and yes, it was the dogs year. I mean, the, the permute, there, there's only a finite number of dollars each year that the state is willing to allot to the paramutual industry and so you basically have to trade off and, and on who gets what and last year was the dogs years and they got the the big brunt of the of the tax uh, tax break that was given last year uh, so we're now going to move forward and try to you know step by step help to uh, to bring in new products that are going to eventually help us to hopefully open up a new Tampa highlight again and maybe even Palm Beach and Daytona Beach we've got some great markets out there that are that are feasibility for for building these frontons back up again but we've got to bring in additional product well, as a player, Benny, uh, I know you want what's good for the sport, what's, what we need to do to help the business, but doesn't it bother you a little as a player to see uh, efforts in the legislature going to the same type of thing that's a competition elsewhere for gambling dollars, to go for those uh, video lottery machines? It, it, it's almost uh, a little bit, bit discouraging from a player's point of view, I would think. Well, you know, the player wants, uh, wants first of all, to have a good job, and, you know, we were at... Uh, at you know, there was a possibility of losing a fronton, another fronton. We've already lost several frontons throughout the years. And, uh, you know, if we wouldn't have gone, we, meaning the union and the players, gone up and, and fought for these extra products and extra things that we needed to get, you know, we would probably be in a worse situation. And, of course, I would like to see us lobbying for things that are going to bring more money, more job security, more, you know, things that, uh, that help the player. But at the same time, we're all in this together. If, if, you know, the player doesn't exist without the fronton. The fronton doesn't exist without the players. Uh, you know, we, we give and we take. So I, I have no problem going. I mean, I go up. I've been invited a couple times to go up to Tallahassee, you know, uh, besides, aside from the players going up. And, uh, you know, I have a good time every time I go up there, and it's an effort that is, is, you know, it's going for the good of the sport, looking at the whole picture. So, yeah, I have a good time. Benny's a real popular figure up there. The, what he was talking about is they have uh, Dade Days. It's a legislative week of all the Dade County legislative Allowed delegation. invite their guests. And uh, Benny is always invited up uh, and, and goes to, we have a couple of functions that he goes to, and he wears his highlight uniform, and uh, we get introduced, and it's very, uh, you know, Benny's, a great speaker and very, you know, a, a very good image for the sport. Yeah, I'm working with him. And one thing, one thing I do want to <laughs> note, though, that so people understand, and, and, and we haven't mentioned this, but whenever we're lobbying to help the owners for these extra products, there's always a, something in it for the players. Uh, we, in the card rooms, for instance, the players get 4% of the, of the money that comes in from the card rooms. When we were lobbying for the video lottery terminals, the players were going to get 10% of the video lottery. So whatever we're out, out there lobbying for, we are going to get something for the players to help us financially and that's the trade-off that we have made with the owners that you know we'll help you on on certain issues that are going to probably predominantly benefit you but the players are going to get a share and and and, and join in on it and that's not unprecedented we've seen that in the horse racing industry industry uh, jockey funds from the breaks and that type of thing absolutely and and we've 
because of our because of the time we've spent up there now, we're whenever there's any kind of talk or discussion about new products now, the players are going to be taken care of, and that's from the you know the hard work we've put in and being up there for as many years as we have. Okay, before we go on to some other things, what's in the future for the legislative process? Obviously, you'd like to get, get some additional card games to improve business there, thus improve getting people in the building, making more for the business, getting more people exposed to the sport. Uh, a lot of efforts here have been involved into different types of parties to bring people into the building, mm -hmm. hoping that it rubs off on them. That doesn't always work. We've seen it at the horse track with concerts at Gulfstream. A lot of those people go to the, watch the show, they leave immediately, they don't watch a race, they don't make a bet. But you gotta try all kinds of things to make it work. Well, I think Highlight is a little bit different in that, in that we've got the greatest floor show on earth. You know, people know a dog and a horse is just gonna run around the track for a minute or so. Uh, my, uh, m what, uh, my thoughts are on that is that I want to get bodies in the building because I feel that if people come in and they see our sport, however we're bringing them into the building, whether it's by parties or whether it's by a bar or whether it's by a boxing match, that when they see our sport, they're going to they're gonna be hooked on it and they're going to fall in love with it. I think our future is, and, and the next legislative um, uh, angle that we're shooting for is the Internet. I think the Internet is the future of this sport uh, to allow for people to see the, the, the real-time uh, broadcast of a highlight game from their homes and then eventually be able to bet on it. We have some legislation that's going on right now. That's a congressional issue um, and uh, we're working on that now with the owners in, in Washington and if we're able to pass that I, I really believe that the internet can do for highlight what the major league, uh, what the uh, network television did for the major league sports. You know all these football players when these people read this the enormous salaries that football players, basketball players, baseball players are making. It's not from the people going to the parks. It's from the television revenues that are created and generated for the owners. That's what I think the internet can do for us. And so I think that's our next uh, you know, mountain that we've got to climb. And if we get there, that will give us worldwide exposure to allow people, because right now we're limited in only three states in the United States that people can see the game. A couple of other countries play the sport. It, you know, the predominant, uh, it's the predominant sport of the Basque region of Spain and France. It's played in Mexico, but we need to open up the doors for people in other states to be able to see it in other parts of the world, and that is going to be the Internet. No question about it. I'm uh, very much involved with the Internet and sports gambling. Uh, there's kind of a gray area out there right now in any type of gambling where the Internet was never a part of any laws before. Nobody knew about the Internet in 1961 when they came out with the Interstate Wire Act that made it illegal to use the telephone to bet on sports. Uh, the horse racing industry has uh, made big strides with UBET, uh, with the Philadelphia Park and the Racing Network to try to allow people to do that. Highline wants to be a part of that. But the recent uh, bills that came up in Congress, uh, first in the Senate, the Kyle bill obviously passed. The House bill was uh, called the Goodlot bill. That went to the floor within the last couple of weeks. And the problem was uh, really for the, it was a good situation for the horse racing, the paramutual industry. They were going to be grandfathered in. And many of those things that looked like were going to be legal if this bill passed. However, there was uh, a certain contingent of people who were voting down the bill, not because they wanted to allow people to gamble, but they thought it was too lenient. They thought there were too many carve outs for the paramutual industry, for fantasy sports, and that type of thing. So there was a lot of late uh, fighting against the bill, and it went down because they're going to have to rework it now. Uh, if it had gone through, it would have been a death knell for wagering on sports uh, and casinos on the Internet, but it would have been a great thing for the paramutuals, and, and unfortunately for, for the paramutuals, it didn't go through. That's true, but uh, you know, it's gonna, it, it now just has to go back to committee, which opens it up for amendments, and, uh, and, it, and there's going to be a major fight over whether or not state lotteries should be included and whether or not Indians again should be included but I you know I still think that it's it, you know we're at least there now and uh, and what I've found out through the legislative process is very rarely do you ever get anything past your first year whether it's been in Congress or whether it's been in the state legislatures it ta generally takes a little bit of time to work a bill and I, I hope that uh, that it being in the public eye now that it's going to it's going to get the attention it needs you know we have we have to keep fighting for that that angle of it what because what happens is is that if um, if we you know people all, I get on our website all the time people write me and say well why don't highlights front us just go ahead and spend the money and put up the signal anyway even though we can't bet on it well the problem is these it take people think it's cheap and easy to do this and and plus the the technology is not really there yet unless you have DSL or cable modems the speed is not up to, yeah, you know stream, it, it, streaming video it, is a long way to go it's got a long way to go but once we're there and I, that's why I think uh, within a year or two through the legislative process and then the technology is going to catch up with us. I think that we're on a timetable for a couple of years down the road 
And, and people have to understand that the frontons, they cannot just go and expend this money to do it and then find out that, the, the, that Congress makes it illegal. And then they've spent millions of dollars on the infrastructure right. that's needed to do this, and Congress then comes in and says, oh, by the way, you can't do it anymore. They, they have to wait until something is done through the legislative process to clarify and specify how and what can be done over the Internet. And once that's done, then, then we're ready to, to get into the technical part of it. And, and hopefully, within, by the time that the legislative process works out, technology will catch up. But if you bet has been successful for horse racing, the racing network with uh, some, certainly some dog racing being shown on those, aren't we about this close to maybe uh, reaching that summit and, and getting that done? We're very close to it. it. It depends on what happens in the legislative process. There's some other ways that... that that the permutual industry can go, you know, there's the, a lot of these places are going offshore and they're they're going away from the, the 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 ability for the United States laws to govern them. But they want to try to do it the right way if they can first. If they don't, or if things look like it's just going to get bogged down into politics, which I know this is going to shock you, but that bill that got killed or that that didn't pass the way we wanted to. It also was a lot of it was political because yeah. the Republicans were controlling the bill and some of the Democrats just wanted to take a shot at it because it's election year stuff and so it's unfortunate but that's the reality of politics. You get, you get thrown into things that aren't your fight. Many times we've lost bills that had nothing to do with highlight. We get stripped out because of a fight between the dogs and the horses. Yeah. It's just that's the political process. We're in that arena. We have to play by their rules but um, hopefully that we keep going and we keep pushing for it. Something's going to happen to make this thing work. And there was a big deal to do with uh, people wanting to put amendments on it, the way they brought it up, there was it was not allowed to have any amendments. Therefore, they had to get a two-thirds majority instead of a half, right. and uh, instead of a simple majority. And right. that's and why the bill, it went down. The, right. The bill actually there was enough votes to pass it, but not by the two-thirds majority, which didn't mean the bill died. It just means it's sent back to committee and opens it up for for So, so we will probably now. see it later in the. In I the think fall. we may see it by the by the time they end in October. We may see another attempt at it. Okay. Let's. You brought up the internet, and you guys are making your first step into. Uh, a website in the last year really has grown a lot. You have a whole new look in the last uh, week or so yes. uh, with frames, and uh, I know that you're working very hard on that, and it's proven to be kind of a gathering place for people to come talk about Hi-Li. On the discussion forum, you get a lot of people that come in, maybe uh, some of the same people a little too often, but uh, uh, it, you got to start somewhere. Absolutely. Now you guys have expanded with a chat room, and I guess you had your first chat on, what, Friday night? Yeah, we, uh, we put up the chat room Friday uh, morning, and so uh, it's in the uh, infancy stage, but I, I felt proud about it. Friday night we did our first kind of uh, gathering. I just, uh, by the way of the discussion forum, told people I'd be in there at 9 o'clock to see if anybody was in there that wanted to talk to me, and I ended up staying in there for over, over an hour, and other people stayed on there. We had 10 or 15 people come in there. Uh, I'm going to invite Benny to come in there. We're going to try to set scheduled times for players to come in and spend uh, an hour with the, you know, to give the fans a chance to, to interact with them. Uh, we're going to be uh, putting up uh, player profiles now that uh, I gave players. If Benny, you remember last uh, last year, I gave you five pages of. I mean, people were getting crazy about all the questions. But these are the kinds of things. Fan I want the fans to to know you guys are human beings and that you guys have a life and that you guys, you know, are not just a, an automaton out on the highlight court. And and I think the player profiles are going to give fans that inside look at the players. And now with the chat rooms, they're going to be able to get into into the player a little bit more. And I'm and I think that's just a good addition. Uh, we did. Did a jersey auction uh, through the website. Yeah, I, wanted to, I wanted to show a couple of these. Because, we uh, we I had our tournament. Myself. We had our tournament in uh, last November. It was the first union-sponsored tournament in Orlando, and uh, the, we had special jerseys made for the players. That uh, and and then we auctioned off the jerseys. The back of the jerseys is each player has their own name so on it. And, your uh, store is a jersey. And so that was very successful. We auctioned off, um, I don't know, maybe about 60 jerseys. And, uh, and we had bids on all but about three or four of them. There's still a few shirts left up there, but I think that went really well. Actually, a, an interesting side note is that we have a counter on our website, and we're, you know, we're, we know how many hits that we had each month. The month of July when we were doing the auction was our biggest month ever, which is unusual because July is usually a slow season for the for Highline in general, you know, when people are on vacation and, and, you know, the frontons are usually less crowded during that month. And it was our biggest month, so I think the, the Jersey auction really attracted people into it. And, uh, and so I'm hoping now with the chat room that we're going to be able to uh, continue. You know, I'm, I want the fans to interact with us. I want them to tell us what we want. We're going to try to help them. We, we, we allow people to request cestas and, and equipment on there. And, uh, you know, we're just, I want to make sure that the fans that we do have out there have aware, have some place to come and, and can, uh, can, can get the information and, and the interaction that they want. Well, let's tell them how to get there. It's www.ijapa. E which is the name of the union. That's right. just type that in www.ehapa.com. 
ijapa.com, I-J-A-P-A, and uh, you'll find a discussion forum there. You'll find a lot of good information about the players and, and even pictures. the union itself, right. uh, past things that you've done there. Uh, this was great, the, uh, the auction of the jerseys, uh, really some nice ones out there that were really only worn for a couple of games. Yeah, so it's not like, you got three some, days. not like you got some guy's uh, sweaty mess there. That, uh, <laughs> and we cleaned them, by the way. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, Benny, you've uh, been on the Internet uh, for quite some time. I know you were one of the first guys really to uh, post in some messages on the Milford board. Uh, you thanked the fans, I remember, about a year ago mm -hmm. for the way they treated you up there when you went up and played at Milford. And it's a great way to, to get some rapport unlike the guy screaming at you through the screen really, that we talked about earlier. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's nice because if you think about it, how many Major League Baseball players or basketball players, you know, interact with the fans, uh, you know, in that, you know, in that sense where they're, you know, there whenever, if a, a message is posted, we can answer it back literally within 24 hours, you know, so if any fan ever wanted to know anything from any player, well, not all the players online, but, you know, there's ways of communicating with them. I, I read the, the, you know, the messages every couple of days, so I'm pretty much into it. I hardly ever send anything in unless it concerns me, but, uh, you know, for the most part, I go on and I read all the well, stuff. Well, I think Glenn would urge you to do that a little more. Uh, it's they, nice they, to get the guys they out They put there. our web address up. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, Benny, uh, Benny's going to be one of the first guests that we're going to invite into the, into the chat room probably next week. So uh, we have, a, a, like, a headline, highlight headlines section right when you go into the site, and we'll announce the time and, and the day that we're going to do that. One of the other things, Dave, that, that, that has been very popular for us in the discussion forum is, is me getting uh, results from the best country. There's summer tournaments going on, Iristorza from Miami is over there playing right now. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's say that. We're going to take one more break okay. here. Uh, but that is really our only source of information on things we really want to know about. Let's take a quick break. This will be a short one. We'll come right back. We'll finish off the program. We'll let uh, Glenn update what's happened over there. This is Miami Highlights. You're listening to Glenn Jones here from the Players Union, Benny Bueno, and myself, Big Dave Lemon. We'll be back after this. Graceful. It's stylish. It's dangerous. It's war. It's like nothing else in this world. Miami High Lie. You can bet on it. Okay, we're back here on the program. I wasn't quite ready to come back. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> this is live TV, and uh, you guys get us warts and all, but. Uh, uh, Glenn Jones is with me here. Benny's uh, getting ready to play. He's taking off for some later action here. But uh, we started getting into the talk about uh, what's happening over in Europe. And it's a big time over there. They have a kind of a short season in the summer where uh, players that we're really used to seeing here get to play that partido action, which is totally different. Absolutely. Play games to 35 points sometimes that can last an hour and a half, two hours. Yep. But uh, a tournament, a big one. In fact, Benny. Uh, mentioned he had played in it before. It's the Intercontinental Tournament. I know they're into the semifinals this weekend, and uh, some really familiar names are playing in that one. And I just got a call uh, five minutes before I got here from uh, one of the players that's playing. Uh, I knew he must have won because he called me to, t <laughs> to, to tell me how, he, how, how it went. Uh, Ariaga from Dania and Osa, they're both uh, Dania players. They just defeated um, Lander, who used to play in Milford, and Goitia by the score of 35 to 24. That's a big win for uh, uh, in a tournament that's uh, you that's know, pretty much a butt whooping yeah, usually they're you know in usually those partidas go 35 30 35 32 but uh, 35 24 is a pretty big win so they uh, they defeated them today to move into the finals which is a week from tuesday that will be played in guernica uh, tomorrow uh, the this the other uh, partido is played um, that uh, will determine who they're going to meet and um, and that's uh, that's a really um, that's one of the big tournaments. The big, big tournament happens this year very late. Uh, the World Championships don't take place till the end of uh, October. That's also known as the At World the end of Cup. September, yes. That, that goes, it starts September 28th to October 22nd. And actually, I'm pl uh, planning on making my first trip to the Basque Country over there to see it this that, summer. That would so. be a thrill. I know I'm, you're looking, forward, really to looking forward to that. But anyway, the other part, Dito, would be, I guess, Alberti and Lisegui against Alberti the second and Barando. Exactly. The winner of that will meet Ariaga and Osa for the final of the Intercontinental. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, Al and, and the... Uh, it's just been very interesting because a lot of the, the favorites, I, Barracua has been doing very well over there. Barracua uh, has been winning a lot of the tournaments. Um, he got injured uh, and had to scratch last, uh, to, in the semi, in, to get into the semifinals last week. So uh, the, the two Albertis that uh, played in Dania, one played under Alberti, the other played under Oregi. They, play, they uh, square off to, to, to play. And, uh, 
And I think it's going to be a great final because uh, Ariaga and Osa are a very good defensive team and they, they, they play well together. The other two teams are going to be, I think, a little more offensive. So I think it'll be a good match of, of styles and contrast of styles. For Miami Highlight fans, Ira Storza playing, and I guess quite well over there, making a big impression. Absolutely. Ira Storza, uh, you know, won the, uh, the Brewritz Masters with uh, Mendy, who isn't the Mendy that people remember from Miami and Hartford. This is a, a kid, Mendy Born, that plays. Uh, he's from France. Uh, and Ira Storza won the uh, tournament MVP. I got a lot of reports from him that they said he was playing absolutely the best. And, uh, and, and you look for him to play very well, I think, in the, in the uh, World Cup over there, I think, at the end of the summer. And there's also a tournament going on in France right now, the tournament of Hosegor, I right. guess it's called. And uh, that was recently completed. A player named Borders, yeah. who nobody's heard of here, yeah. uh, teamed with Felix to win that. Yeah, the, Borders uh, is, a, is one of the players. There's about five or six guys over there that just don't come over here or have no intention of coming over here. They just play the partido style. It is, it is totally different. There's many players that have come over here. A Reggie from Dania was a prime example. Did not like the Quinella style. He left to go back home. There's some players that just that, that don't like it, don't want to play the Quinella style of game that we play over here. So uh, Borders is one of those players, and uh, he teamed with Felix. Uh, Felix is uh, the old man in the tournament, 38 years old, but he's still doing well, and they won the, uh, the Hasegar tournament. And, uh, Okay. And we're getting ready for, uh, and, and I'll keep updating on the website. I, I yeah, post the results. Check it out. You, you can get the time. results there, ehapa.com. Check it out. Also, you can pick up one of these nice jerseys there. There's, yeah, there's like three left, left yeah. four left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah we found a Lahardi. <laughs> one of the Lahardi's jerseys, we lost in Orlando, and one of the players came down last week. He said, guess what I had in my locker room? So there's another Lahardi out there for you Miami fans. Okay, we're running out of time. Uh, that's going to be it for the show this weekend. We'll have Glenn on again because we barely touched the surface of a lot of things we'd like to discuss. We'll have him on again in a week or two. Uh, but we'll see you next week here on the program. I'm Big Dave Lemon. So long. We'll see you next time on Miami Highlights.